This video is called How to Design Your Corporate Sustainability Report. My name is Lindsay Hampson. I'm the president of This Rock Inc. We're a sustainability consulting firm, and we've helped dozens of businesses figure out sustainability, including writing sustainability reports. So what is a sustainability report? Maybe you're the owner of a business or you're on the executive team, or maybe you're the head of marketing or HR or compliance or finance, and you've been asked to collectively put together an impact report or an ESG report for your company. So this video is for you. We're going to talk about do's and don'ts. We're going to talk about steps to do the sustainability report. But first, we're going to kick it off with why do a sustainability report? We pulled four screen grabs from four different sustainability or impact reports. So we're looking at Nike's impact report from 2023. Why would Nike want to have a report on their website? Well, their stakeholders. So their employees would read it. Customers would read it. Obviously, their board, their investors. So all the different stakeholders would want to know what is Nike's environmental plan? What is their impact? How are they treating their people? Do they have any issues or ethical, ethical concerns or legal issues in 2023? What are their metrics? What is their plan? So as you can see, in the sustainability report or impact report for Nike, they're disclosing a bunch of information and their goal is to be transparent, to meet requirements from their stakeholders, and just to be a good brand. Nestle does the same. You can see they're creating shared value and sustainability report 2023. You can go read all about them. Again, at the back of their report, they have a bunch of tables with data and you can see year over year how they're tracking against labor and human rights, environmental impact, and so on. Amazon's is below that. Here's a screenshot of the Amazon's 2023 report. Again, it follows a similar suit, a bunch of different pages, big PDF, talks about their impact on people, Planet talks about their changes in packaging and their move to electric vehicles and so on. And then the last one is our report, uh, This Rock, my company's report. Even though there's just a few of us and we're a smaller company, we created our own sustainability report for 2023. Why would we do that? Well, we want to be transparent as well. And we think the major themes of sustainability matter to our clients and stakeholders as well. So this is just a quick view of the sustainability report and what it looks like. You can go to your favorite brand's website right now and look for the word sustainability, impact, or ESG. And maybe you can see a PDF all about their impact. Why the sudden shift to sustainability reporting? Well, if you've been around the business community for a while, you might have heard of CSR reporting. That's corporate social responsibility reporting. That's usually a business disclosing their impact on the community. So ways that they're giving back, ways that they're treating their people, that sort of thing. But the Paris Agreement underscored urgent need for global action on climate change. So businesses started to get their act together and disclose more information than just what they're doing for the community. But they started talking about the impact of the environment on their business, their business's impact on people and planet, and so on. The major reasons for sustainability reporting are regulatory pressures, investor demands, I definitely see this, customer expectations, competitive pressure, I absolutely see this one too. So if a business is going after an RFP, they want to win new business. If it's competitive, sometimes the big company will look at the RFPs and pick the winning company based on having sustainability as a key strategy of the business. Also risk management. So if you're not looking at the physical and regulatory risks of climate change or social impact, then your business may be exposed. And then finally, reputational management and global trends. We're seeing this in Europe, lots of businesses are doing sustainability reports. We're definitely seeing this come over to North America and it might be your business that needs a report. So a sustainability report, what should it do? Well, it should provide transparency and transparency on data. So people don't wanna open your sustainability report for your company and read some fluffy language about how you love the environment with a picture of a tree. They want to see your numbers. They want to see that you're getting serious about starting to track maybe your energy consumption and scope one and two emissions, maybe that you're training your employees, maybe that you're tracking incidents of child labor or modern slavery. So they want you to be transparent and they'll like some stories as well, but they want to see data. They want to see you're serious about targets and that you have measures or initiatives to meet your targets. It should provide trust. 
It should show your long-term success and, and then enhance your reputation. And it should engage all your stakeholders. So one of these reports isn't just for your employees. Great, they can read it. Maybe your channel partners can read it. Maybe your investors can read it. Uh, all over the map, this report is a one report for everyone. You wouldn't make individual ones for different stakeholders. One report says everything about your company related to the 14 main themes of sustainability. And then you provide a little bit more information as they need it. If you've watched our other videos, you may have seen one about the 14 main themes of sustainability. And I could rhyme them off right now, but some of them include energy, water, waste, greenhouse gas emissions, procurement, encroachment, circularity, wages, health and safety, diversity, community, governance, and so on. So when you look at the key elements of a sustainability report on the screen, you can see that they really follow suit with those themes. So you would disclose your environmental impact and you would have real metrics, real initiatives, and maybe real case studies about what your company is doing to reduce energy consumption at location B, for example. You would have data and metrics. So you would have KPIs. And I know people throw around the word or the term KPI all the time, but an example KPI could be, you know, we, we are tracking month over month our water usage because we want to reduce our water consumption by 2027 by 5% at one location. And so a KPI could be what in one specific area of the business, how is water being reduced? How many actions are being taken? How many employees are being trained on water saving measures, for example? So you want to see that kind of detail. Social responsibility would be in there too, talking about labor and human rights and modern slavery. Do you train your people on ethics? People want to know this. This would be information in your report. Also goals and achievements. Now I put achievements last on purpose because people want to see that you're serious. You're throwing out real numbers, real goals you want to achieve. And then you can talk about some wins later, but this is definitely not a bragging report. A sustainability report is a mission driven report about the future. Governance practices. We want to know that you're serious, that you're reviewing your policies, that you have a whistleblower policy, grievance mechanism for people to report incidents that they worry about with your business and the environment or the protection of people, etc. And finally, future plans. Now, it would be greenwashing to say we're going to hit net zero without ever including how you're going to get there. So be careful about future plans. You can work with somebody like me or a sustainability consultant or expert out there to help make sure that you're not greenwashing when you're talking about your future plans related to sustainability. So we came up with eight steps in creating a sustainability report. So stay with me. Number one is do some research. Maybe go look at your peers, look at a company you want to be like, or look at the requirements of maybe a big customer that's asking for a sustainability report from you. Figure out what do you need it to look like? Are there frameworks or standards that you need to align your data in? One could be the GRI or SASB or the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So do your research in your assessment. Two is start gathering data. So we can't create any targets without baseline data. So go grab your utility bills, uh, go and talk to HR about uh, labor and human rights, even talk to the IT staff, the finance staff. You need to pull cross-functional data for a baseline year. Three, set baselines and targets. So now that you have all that in there, I usually create a spreadsheet where we go key theme by key theme and what our baseline metric is for a baseline year. And then let's create some smart goals that are clear so that, you know, uh, clear, achievable, and aligned with strategy. Then you can start telling your story. So, you know, what is compelling and truthful and non greenwashy? Um, but what is your company doing that is sustainable today that you want to share for the purpose of maybe um, inspiring other companies like you to do the same or telling your customers so that they're proud to continue to work with you? Then you move to format and design. Some of this can be done at the same time, uh, but you would want to look for a logical flow. Again, most people put uh, the tables align, aligned to regu uh, regulations and standards at the bottom. And at the top, you would have like an intro from maybe your CEO or your board, but then you'd want to hit into the numbers right away, into your targets, into your baseline data. Because if you start with too much um, wording, too much verbiage, then it seems like hmm, it's a little bit too marketing-y and not enough context, in my opinion. 
Then you would go to review and validation. So once everything's in there, content is written, you like the flow of things, you would open up for review. Again, you've heard the saying before, maybe there's too many chefs in the kitchen, too many cooks in the kitchen. Then really determine who needs to read the report. Make sure they get their two cents in there. Sometimes external validation is very helpful at this point to make sure your numbers are correct. Then you would publish and communicate it. There'd be a launch day. Usually reports come out the year after the data happened, kind of like an annual report. So if you're reporting on data from 2023, the report would come out in 2024, but it would be called the 2023 Sustainability Report. We saw this with Nike, for example. Finally, last up is monitor and improve. Most companies submit yearly sustainability or impact or ESG reports. So you're going to want to monitor, monitor what was helpful, what wasn't helpful. Obviously, and hopefully, you're tracking all of your commitments in a spreadsheet or in a software tool so that next year when it comes time to make a new sustainability report, you've actually advanced in progress against some of your major goals. For example, that water or energy consumption example I gave earlier. All right, a couple do's and don'ts. Well, do's, definitely highlight your achievements, but I mentioned this earlier, don't put them right up front because it's a little braggy. Always share your goals and stories, always. People wanna know what your goals are because they're gonna hold you accountable. Share stories about how you're gonna get there, the initiatives or the measures you're taking. So an example would be, um, we wanna make sure we're working with suppliers that care and so we're training every single buyer at our company on sustainable procurement and what to look for. We're also creating a checklist for suppliers to make sure that they can self-assess themselves against ESG criteria. That would be an example. Three is align with standards. Please always do this. Don't just create a sustainability report with no backing. Make sure that you've aligned yourself to the UN SDGs, for example, or GRI or SASB. There's a bunch of different frameworks. Pick a few, pick one at least. Four, if you can, verify your data with a third party so that it's not just one person looking at it, but it's been verified by somebody else also. And finally, engage your stakeholders. You could do this right at the beginning. Sometimes we throw out pulse surveys to our customers' main stakeholders, so their employees, their board, um, maybe a committee, um, and all of their employees, and we figure out what matters to them in the sustainability report. And then when we're making the report, we make sure we hit those points. Don'ts. No greenwashing, please. Avoid making exaggerating or misleading claims about your sustainability efforts. Honestly, they will get you into hot water. Make sure everything's always backed. When I'm creating a sustainability report for a client, my favorite thing and one of the most important things to do is get raw data before I'm going to put it in. So I want to see utility bills. I want to see records that employees had annual reviews, for example. I want to know what the average salary is for your employee. I want to look at living wage. So get the data and that will help you avoid greenwashing. Also, if you're making future claims, like I mentioned, make sure they're backed with action or else they can also seem greenwashy. Don't make unachievable promises. Please don't do that. You know that already. Don't mislead your audience by, um, you know, creating a, just a logo that's green and then not really talking about any substance. People talk about this a lot. Um, or if you, uh, on your product, for example, say green, you know, green widget, then everyone's going to assume, oh, this must be totally recyclable. This must be made 100% of recycled materials. Don't uh, make sure you substantiate that claim or get rid of it. If it's not serving you or it's a little greenwashy, get it out. Don't mislead people. Don't ignore negative impacts. So if your business uh, is, is doing something that's creating a lot of CO2, for example, be honest about it and say, we, we noticed this through our research, through our um, investigation into our scope one and two emissions. And yeah, transparently, we have an issue and we're going to address it over the next couple of years. So don't ignore negative impacts. Just be totally honest and transparent about it. And finally, don't neglect design and accessibility. So make it look nice. Again, I mentioned it's OK if you want to use a Word document and then type in your information, have a couple charts, have your logo, PDF that up. I mean, that's better than nothing. And then as you move on and get more mature with your sustainability reporting, you can bring in more design components. Um, you know, it can be pretty simple with tools like Canva, for example, or you can hire an outside agency to help you. The sky's the limit, really, with design. 
Well, we've seen some cool stuff over the years when we look at sustainability reports. So we've thrown down some ideas. Number one is interactive digital reports. So if your company is able to throw um, a web page up on your site, you know, maybe it's your domain forward slash impact or forward slash sustainability, people can click through and actually see the numbers, see some of the initiatives. That's really cool instead of just a PDF. Uh, two is have a sustainability dashboard. Wow, that's amazing. So uh, people could click through the data. They could see real time data, maybe for scope one and two and three emissions, for example. The third is augmented reality, which I love. So if you're a complex company and you're really doing an amazing thing for, um, let's say, waste reduction, it would be pretty cool to use augmented reality to walk people through how you're making that change and lessening waste to landfill. Uh, four is employee and community impact stories. If your stakeholders like your employees are engaged with your report and they want to tell their own stories and have a video on your website or your community wants to contribute, then it doesn't seem like you have a megaphone yelling at people about what you're doing for sustainability, but rather there are voices that are contributing and we can hear different voices. And finally, gamified reporting, which is totally new and super interesting. And it's about people walking through your report and really understanding how it works and scoring points and learning more about your company and asking questions. It's almost educational and interesting. So the way to not have a fluffy sustainability report for your business, data. People wanna see data. People don't wanna read text about your love for nature and your um, commitment to the environment. People wanna see that you're actually counting, you actually care, you're training your people, you're tracking KPIs, key data points, you have measures, you're being smart about this. Because overall, in the end, you wanna make sure your report is transparent, it builds trust, and it's meaningful. It actually matters because without thinking through the future problems of climate change, the physical and regulatory risks, social impact, you know, issues to your reputation based on issues with modern slavery and your supply chain. Without thinking through all that, and that's looking at data, then you really haven't done anything to do with sustainability. So make sure you're on the right side of that. Start with data, start with frameworks, build a report from there. It's okay to celebrate your achievements, put them later in the report. Um, but really make sure that your report conveys the mission that you're on. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you ever have any questions about sustainability reports or if there's a sustainability report you want me to review for you, I'd love to. Uh, again, thanks again for watching and have a great week. See you later.